Me 20, all right? 2020. So uh, we are on the second month of our year, and we're kicking off this new team about um, about being enlarged. But enlarged, this is the team, the direction that we believe God is uh, giving to us. Uh, Pastor Ron and I, we've been meditating about this, and we've been uh, seeing how God uh, begin to uh, unfold to us. Um, all the messages uh, and this month we want to specifically uh, speak in the subject about vision all right so um, so 2020 what is 2020 um, in the ophthalmology uh, field you know the the word 2020 is an expression that usually they use to to describe the condition of a person's uh, vision all right so what does it means a 2020 it means it's a term that use um, um, to express normal visual acuity, which means clarity and sharpness of a vision. Because, you know, every eye can see, but not every eye, every eyes have the same clarity and sharpness of what they see. All right. So when you are said to have a 20-20 vision, it means, uh, you know, uh, from the distance of 20 feet, you are seeing things very clear and very sharp. All right. So I believe that as a believer, we must have a 20-20 vision, you know. And it, you know, if not physically, you know, just like me, I wear a, a, a corrective lens, you know, because there was a refractive error on my sight. So I need a corrective lens to correct my vision. But spiritually, you know, I believe that we must also maintain 2020 vision because God would want us to go in the direction where he is guiding us. And it would be to our detriment if we're not able to see it clear in clarity and in sharpness. All right. So this year we begin with this declaration from Isaiah 54 that says enlarge the place of your tent stretch your tent curtains wide do not hold back lengthen your courts strengthen your stakes for you will spread out to the right and to the left your descendants will dispossess nations and settle in their desolate cities and if you keep reading in, in the whole uh, passage it will tell you do not fear you will not suffer disgrace you will not suffer uh, the shame of your youth again but God is promising us uh, a favorable days so hence the title the team and large all right and this is the areas of to grow where we believe this team is to challenge us this year you know first we believe that we must grow in our ability to envision uh, so our vision must grow must enlarge you know and then we want to grow in the area of our heart of our uh, of our understanding of our thinking that are so dear to us, you know. And then we want to see growth in the area of responsibility. I'm believing that when we grow, when we grow, um, God will enable us to do more things, you know, to take more responsibility. In fact, I think the what sets apart between children and adult, you know, is that they're able to take more responsibility. You know, they're responsible for their action, for their thoughts, for their words. But beyond just being responsible for self, you know, they will be able to be responsible of the circle beyond themselves and then we were praying we, we want to see uh, areas of uh, growth in the areas of faith you know we want to see our, our the faith of our uh, church enlarge because we know that where God is calling us is not a place of obscurity but God is calling us into a destiny of greatness amen all right all right let me begin by this statement I've said I've said this statement so many times but I just saw I just thought this will set the tone to what we are going to start this morning. This was said by the first graduate, uh, first deaf and blind person to graduate college in America and he, her name is Helen Keller and Helen Keller says once he, she was asked by a reporter you know, it was unclear what the question was but it's somewhere around uh, this question. It, it, it sounds something like this. What's, uh, I mean, uh, the reporter was trying to address uh, her situation and they asked her What's being? What's the worst? What's worse than being born blind and deaf? You know, actually, that's not correct because she was not born uh, blind and deaf. You know, but then again, she she replies. She says the only thing worse than being blind is having sight but no vision. All right. The only thing worse than being blind is having sight but no vision. All right. So uh, we will learn this morning. You know, the difference between having sight and having insight. 
all right? Because those two things are different. Uh, those two things are very different, all right? So everybody can have a sight, but not everybody will gain insight of what they see, all right? So Helen Keller was addressing this. Uh, you know, I, I think it's a challenge to every single one of us. We're all born perfect. At least we have eyes to see. We have ears to hear. We're able to see, you know. But the challenge for us is not just to get an optical uh, in, uh, optical uh, illusion or to see an object, but to make meanings of what we see, to understand, all right, the context of it. All right, so that's why uh, you got to understand being a believer, you are blessed with so many things. You are blessed with so many opportunities. You know, you, you see the faithfulness of God day in, day out, but you've got to understand the real meaning of what you experience or what you see. All right? So that is why we need the vision. Uh, let me begin by Genesis. Genesis tells us a story about this uh, uh, patriarch of our faith, uh, Abraham. You know, back then he was still Abram. And verse 14 says, Genesis 13, 14 says, The Lord said to Abram, after Lot had parted from him, Look around from where you are, to the north and, and south, to the east and west. All the land that you see, I will give to you and your offspring forever. All right. So, uh, a little bit of background. You know, this was when, you, you all know the story how God was saying in, in Genesis 12, you know, uh, go out of your comfort zone, go out of your family, the house of your father others and go to the land where I will I'm showing you because um, I will bless you to be a great nation and I will bless those who bless you I will curse those who curse you so it's an Abrahamic covenant but uh, you know as Abraham began to did that you know um, uh, apparently he took uh, along his nephew with him Lot you know, he didn't really pay attention to what God says you know and uh, long story short they were both blessed and to the point that there were contention and strife between them because you know the shepherd the, sh the shepherd from uh, Abraham's flock and the shepherds from Lot's flock you know they 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 struggle they they uh, strive for waters so there was uh, this harmony there was fight and to the point that you know Abraham told Lot okay Lot uh, this cannot go on look at the valley Tell me where you want to go. If you go left, I go right. But we both will part ways with God's blessing. I will bless you. So after that happened, apparently, you know, it didn't say, but if you read this, apparently you can get the sense that Abram was pretty down, you know, because he loved his nephew. So, and then the Lord said to Abram, after Lot had parted, Abram, look around, look around. Because not only that, Lot happened to be given the first choice. All right. And Lot choose the best looking valley that was on the lot. <laughs> all right. So Lot was looking at all the whole valley of Sodom and Gomorrah, so luscious, green, very fertile. So Lot said, okay, if you, since you asked me to choose, I'll go there. Okay, so and then Abram was left, was left with a desert barren land. <laughs> so uh, apparently he's depressed, but God says, Abram, look around you. From where you are, from where you are to the north and south out to the east and west all the land that you see I will go I will give to you and give your offspring forever you got to understand in the Bible there's an emphasis from men again and again and again on the ability to see you know the importance of the ability to see in the story of creation God validated his creation by saying God look at what he had created and seen you know redeemed that they are all very good all right so uh, the ability to see and 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 you know uh, even in this passage, you know, I want to say to you, you know, it's important that Abram being able to see, because the Bible says that all the land that you see, I will give to you and your offspring forever. All right, all the land that you see. So that being said, it's important for us to look at our ability to see. You know, because many times we're not able to see what God wants us to possess. And if this is this condition, you know, that I will give you what you will see. And we have got to correct that refractive error on our spiritual vision. We have got to be able to see where God wants to lead us. All right. So this is very important. You know, uh, um, many people are born with uh, great 
great uh, benefits, uh, are born with great opportunity, but they are not able to see the significance, the relevance, and cannot connect the two dots. And, you know, uh, potential can just be vanities when you don't connect it to purpose. When you don't connect it to direction, you know. But the minute you see it, you get it, you know. Even the simplest thing within your life can be so powerful and can be the difference between success and failure. All right? So, you know, we got to pray. I'm praying uh, in this church that every single one of you, especially in your time here in Boston, you know, that you will get the vision that God wants you to see. I know God wants you to see something. So if you are humble and if you are hungry, God will lead you to the vision that will set the tone of your life. You know, God will, you know, despite seeing the discouragement that you can see with your physical eyes, you need to see the land that God has prepared for you. All right. So our church, City Blessing Church, you know, we we have this word, you know, we have this verse as our uh, as our uh, vision statement, as our, uh, uh, you know, foundational belief uh, from Luke chapter four, verse 18 to 19. It says here, the spirit of the Lord is on me. In fact, if you can read it, can you read with me together? Let's declare it together. The Spirit of the Lord is on me because He has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim freedom for the prisoners and recovery of sight for the blind, to set the oppressed free, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. So this was back when Jesus started His public, public ministry. He went to the temple and He took a scroll, which happens to be Isaiah 61, and He wrote from that context. And it was so cool, you know, at the end He said, Today, this verse has been fulfilled. Yours truly. <laughs> Only Jesus can do that, all right? But it's just so cool, you know, because we, we got to believe that we are the representative of Christ, you know, and we have the same mandate with Him. You know, in fact, the Bible says, the Father says that, you know, we, we are called to do greater things than what Jesus has done, you know, which is to bring into completion what He has started, you know. So, the Spirit of the Lord is on me because He has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim freedom for the prisoners and recovery of sight. So you see, this is very important. This word here is really important. I believe that the role of the church is to be a place where you can cause people to see God's vision. And I believe that for every believer who believe in the word of God, God is calling us to be salt and light. God is calling us maybe to enlighten the darkness around us that will help people to see the light. We have this very important role to help people to recover sight because for the longest time people have maybe been walking in the darkness. They are just drifting, they are just flowing, but there's no sense of direction. You know, there are those who live in life and they keep making a new goal, a new destination, you know. The Chinese uh, had a proverb that says, you know, if you don't know the right wind, then every harbor is the right harbor. You know, this was from the time back when people were sta sailing by the power of wind. You know, they, if you're a sailor, you know that if you want to go west, you got to wait for the western wind, westward wind, you know. But if you don't know the right wind, then wherever the wind is leading you, that's your destination. W what a sad way to live. What a sad way to live, to just drift you know maybe if you're a racer that's fun you know drifting you know but when it's alive it's not so much fun to drift not knowing where you are going there's no clear objective there's no direction you know but you know I believe life don't have to be like that life can be more direct and can be more purposeful you know the Bible says that he direct uh, uh, our life with step in with purpose in every step all right so this is the role that we play in case you didn't realize you are under a church who believe in the mandate of recovering sites helping people to see the light you know so I this is a responsibility that I do not take lightly you know I believe that our uh, in, in uh, locally we believe in transforming life and the first thing that we can do is helping people to see what they miss to see all right in Proverbs chapter 29 verse 18 you know we've we've heard this we've said this so many times where there is no prophetic vision the people cast off restraint or live negligently 
live without restraint, live as they please, you know, uh, no planning, no objective insight, but blessed is he who keeps the law. Blessed are those who position themselves within the perimeter of God's boundaries. You know, we need prophetic vision that will guide us where we're going. Otherwise, we could be either be drifting or just floating with no clear objective in mind. And before we realize it, time's up. Time's up. Believe me, we're not going to live forever. For those of you who are still in teens, you know, despite the vigor, the vibrancy, the strength in your life, you got to understand, you will die. <laughs> What an encouraging and uplifting message this morning. Let's take offering. <laughs> you know, but that's the truth. We're not going to live forever. There's a time limit, expiration date on our life. So the goal in our life is that to make sure we get to accomplish as much as we have been called to do in our life before the clock runs out. All right? Because one day we will have to stand before Him and, you know, bring accountability of everything that we have done. All right? The other translation is a lot clearer. This is what it says. I love this translation. If people can see what God is doing, they stumble all over themselves. But when they attend to what He reveals, they are most blessed. You know, uh, there are two meanings that are equally important in this passage. But, you know, I don't want to, uh, so many times I get too excited and I try to explain the whole thing. But today our focus is to be able to see what God is doing or want to see accomplished through us or in us or around us so that we don't stumble all over ourselves. You know, every Sunday we worship in a band, led by a band. Imagine if one player cannot see the whole picture of what the whole band is trying to accomplish. Imagine, you know, the whole band is trying to get to the chorus. You know, he's still on the first. You know, it's already on the bridge, but he's still in intro. You know, so imagine what happened. You know, the, that player is going to stumble all over the song, stumble all over uh, the harmony, you know, and you know what what is once what is what is supposed to be, you know, a chord, it becomes a discord. All right. So if people can see what God is doing, they stumble all over themselves. That's why it is important for us to be able to see what God wants to do what God's trying to do and the, the, the key here is that you got to understand you can you can you know don't be don't bought into that understanding belief that oh you know God is too far out there he's so disconnected into my life you know there's no way I could understand that's such a lie God would want to be very involved and God would want to be in you as much as he wants you to be in him and in his word and that being said it's possible for us to know what God, you know, wants to reveal to us in our life. You know, I'm very encouraged in Acts chapter 2 verse 17. This is the prophecy that has been given from since prophet Joel, you know. And this is what it says. In the last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit on all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see visions. Your old men will dream dreams. Are you listening, church? I believe we are living in the day where the outpouring of the Holy Spirit is the biggest, is the most active, is the most powerful ever right now. You know, ever since the day of Pentecost, it has not stopped. It has not stopped. You know, and, and it's, it's continued. You know, I, I, I don't care what you are saying. Third wave, second wave, you know, great awakening, first, second great awakening, fourth, seventh, sixth. You know, I mean, men can term it however they want, but the Holy Spirit just don't be, they're not limited by our own own term. The fountain has been open. It hasn't stopped since. You know, and you got to understand, it says that you're young men. Please, ladies, don't be put off by this. It's being general here, not just men, but human being, <laughs> young people. And also, please, older generation, don't be put off, you know, because it says here that you're old men. And don't be turned out by the word old also. Right? You know, your old men will dream dreams, you know, visions and dreams. So, you know what? God... If, if you are ready to receive, God is ready to give. And that is the essence of what we believe this year. God was saying, enlarge, prepare the container because I will bring the content. God is in the business of feeling. He has no problem feeling. But many times we have the problem preparing the container. 
you know, don't bought into the lies that it's impossible to understand or to see what God wants to do in my life or His plan for me. That's a lie. That's a lie. God wants to make it available. He has already made it available. It's, it's, you know, it's not easy, I confess. But nothing good is ever easy. Nothing valuable is ever easy. But, you know, the process of acquiring it will really, really transform your life. And the process is as good as the, the, the stuff, you know. You got to understand that. And that's the promise. That's the prophecy. And it has happened. And it will continue to happen. Yes, you can. You can see the vision God wants you to see. All right. Jesus in Matthew 6, verse 22, 23, was addressing the Pharisees. Well, actually, he was rebuking the Pharisees. This is what he says, though. The eye is the lamb of the body. If your eyes are healthy, your whole body will be full of light. But if your eyes are unhealthy, your whole body will be full of darkness. If then the light within you is darkness, how great is darkness. Wow. It's only, you know, it sounds like Jesus who can, you know, play words that deep. You know, uh, but, you know, if the eye, the eye is the lamb of your body, if your eyes are healthy, your whole body will be full of light. If Jesus was addressing the greediness of the Pharisees, how they are after earthly wealth and how they focus on treasuring uh, monies on earth. That's why Jesus says, do not pile up treasure here on earth where the moth and rust can, can rob it from you. And then again, he proceeds by saying this word. He says, the eye is the lamb of the body. Jesus was addressing the darkness of the Pharisees' spiritual eyes. You know, I, I believe this morning it's worth pausing for a while and looking at the degrees, the state of our spiritual eyes. You know, because before we can comprehend it right here, we got to first see it, you know, spiritually, you know. That's why Jesus was saying the eye is the lamb of the body. Your, if your eyes are healthy, everyone say, if my eyes are healthy. Amen, amen. So you got to understand that when the Bible are speaking about, is speaking about eyes, not just speaking about this eyes, but most importantly, this eye right here. All right. Because what you see here and what you see here are very different. All right. But the Bible says the eye is the lamb of the body. You notice it's one eye. It's not plural. It's single. The eye is the lamb of the body. Okay. If your eyes are healthy, your whole body will be full of light. You know, I want to I want to challenge us this morning. Yes, we take good care of our body. Anybody here frequented the gym? It's not a sin. For some of you, you have First Methodist Church of Boston Sport Club, maybe. I don't know. <laughs> some of you hail by the temple of, you know, athletic complex in your school, maybe. You know, maybe you go there more often than you go to church. I don't know. Well, pastor, they say your body is the temple. Yeah. Okay. At least you get it partially right from the Bible. You know, you know but... You, you, you know, ladies, how much money and time you put into making sure that you look beautiful? You, oh, where, go to the salon, you know, once every two days maybe, I don't know. You know, um, you know change the, your hair colors, you know, makeup, you know, nail colors. But have you ever, has, has it ever dawned on you on, you know, taking good care of the eyes of your heart, your conscience, your discernment. What? what how, I don't know how to word this. What investment you put in to make sure you are healthy there? Hello? I mean, you can look so good on the outside, but if your inside is so dull, so dark, so dead, what is it good for? Absolutely nothing. War. No, just <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, you know, I mean, the, the, the length we go, the extra mile we go to take care of everything else in our life, but many times it's the one thing that matter. The one thing that matter. We neglected it. We neglected it. 
whew, I, I had just a perfect illustration for this point because it's something that happened to us. You know, you all notice how it's exceptionally cold this past few weeks, right? Is it cold enough for you or it's just, eh, it's okay. <laughs> you know, uh, let me put it this way. You know, you don't need to put stuff on your refrigerator last week. You could just put it on your garage, your car. Believe me, it won't spoil. It's that cold, all right? And just be thankful we're not in Midwest. <laughs> <laughs> Knock on plexiglass. All right. It was so cold. But, you know, this past few weeks, our household were visited by a, a unique guest. You know, it's an interesting guest. You know, well, being that you live in Newton, it's not unusual to see, you know, wildlife. You know, like students. No, just kidding. <laughs> uh, no, 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 no. Let's not go there. Like deers, you know, right? Uh, turkeys. Oh my God, you know, you know. The first time we saw turkey, you know, we we believe this is what our third, what 15, 16 years, 16 years in Newton, 15. Okay, 15 years. The first year we saw a flock of turkey. We we're like, oh, I was like, oh, turkey. First time we saw turkey not on supermarket aisle, you know, uh, or the frozen section. You know, I was walking. Oh, you know, the second year, oh, third year, uh, <laughs> by now. Uh, <laughs> you know, but we saw turkey, we've seen coyote, we've seen foxes, we've seen kids, you know. <laughs> it's wildlife. But this one is new. This one is new. So apparently there's been a chicken that's been roaming around our yard. Chicken. You know, chicken. And uh, first I thought it was a rooster, but apparently it was not a rooster. It's a female. So it's what? Hen. All right. Good. English 101. And she's been roaming around so ever so bravely in the weather. In the morning I saw this triangle, you know, oh, you know, you know, it's like the trident, you know. So, and, but it was so bitterly cold, you know. So I, I grew up in a farm, so I, I begin to be concerned. We all begin to be concerned. One day, there was a knock on our door. Apparently, it was our, not the chicken, no. <laughs> You have any spare sweater? <laughs> no. Well, apparently it was our neighbor. It was our neighbor, you know, and she happens to be an animal lover. She said, you know, did you know there's a chicken? Oh, of course I know there's a chicken, right? <laughs> you know what, the chicken, it's funny because during the day, the morning usually she will roam, go to the neighbor, you know, socialize maybe, I don't know. <laughs> and then by right about noon time, you know, 12, one, it would go back and you see my house, the door, the main entrance in the middle, so there was left bushes and right bushes. So during the day, after one, usually she will park on the left, but right around about four or five, you know, she would park right here, right there. That's our main window, that's the sanctuary where my, my wife usually sit down with a coffee and do her reading. And she's the first one to notice, oh, there's a chicken in our yard. I was like, woman, are you <laughs> serious? Yeah, yeah chicken, and, and, until I saw it myself. You know, that picture on the left, I, I... So she would climb these branches and just stay there throughout the night. So it's funny, ah, you know, National Geographic on my front yard. <laughs> So, there she is again. Oh, that's a better, a plumpy one, right? I know some of you are thinking. <laughs> no, it's still alive, believe me. And, you know, Sharissa named her Rodney. Uh, I know she is a female, but I don't care. So, Rodney it is. So, so it's just a lot. Hey, I saw Rodney. Oh, Rodney this, Rodney that. So, the whole week, right? Rodney was there, you know. And by the time it gets colder and colder, I begin to be nervous, all right? So, I, uh, you know, I don't know. I start caring, you know. <laughs> Maybe I'm older. I start caring for the chicken. That's not even mine, you know. So, I begin to devise a plan, you know. Okay, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to capture this hen. So I went to Home Depot, get a longest uh, PVC pole, and I have this, you know, uh, uh, you know, years of uh, watching, you know, wild animals and Steve Irwin, you know, get you thinking. And, and put in the, what do you call, a, a, a big cord, make it a loop, so, you know, just to, you know. So 
but you know what? During the day, I was caught up with, you know, sermon preparation things, you know. And, you know, the day, the, 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 the bright day, you know, in this season yeah, lasted so quick, you know. And before long, it's already like about four. By the time I got back from Home Depot, it's already dark. <laughs> Begin to be dark. But I say, if I don't do it now, maybe it will be the last day, you know. So I begin to creep. I saw her right there. I creep slowly. But I was surprised because she doesn't move. You know, I know she's not dead because her head will be doing... <laughs> but the body will stay there, you know. So I begin to creep. And then I slowly extend my pole. But you know what? Because of the branches, I couldn't even move past the loop, the noose, close. Until... But then again, I notice... It was so close, but she's not moving. You know, so, and then again, I, oh, okay, forget this. I put, the, and I start with my small body. I start to inch my way. <laughs> start to inch my Why are you laughing? <laughs> so I made my way, and then well, Kayla was filming from inside, okay? From the warmness of our living room, you know? And then I start, okay, okay, Lord. Okay, let me see, let me see. And then you know what? Didn't move. Until it was so close, and my left hand is on the bottom, and then I just, and then, and then the, you know, there was a recording, but it, it's not pretty. It's a lie, you know, you know. And then, long story short, we we captured Rodney, and then drove it to our neighbor, you know, you know. Right, right, no, no, we walk two, two house down. <laughs> no, no, I won't let Rodney into my car. It dawned on me right about at the corner before I crept in. I remember, I grew up in a farm, but it's been a long time. You know, my, my dad has all kinds of chickens and everything. It dawned on me. Yeah, I mean, some of you growing up in the modernity of this Western world, you don't know. Chicken don't see well at night. Hello? Oh, you just know it now? I grew up in a farm. You know, I remember in my farm, in my father's farm in, in Indonesia, right about that time, like when it begins to dark, all the chickens are flocking into where they are. Go into the pen. They already know because if they are still outside by the time curfew, they're dead. <laughs> they cannot defend themselves. They can't even see the road. So this condition, you know, in the medical, even in Indonesia, they have a medical condition named by it. Hello? <laughs> Nyctalopia. <laughs> it's night blindness. It's Rabun Ayam. <laughs> Rabun is myopic. Okay, I did my research. Believe me, this is all valid. Myopic, it's a form of nearsightedness. All right? But when the light begins to dim, they were like, uh, <laughs> that's what happened. So, apparently, me being held up during my day job has a purpose. Because if I were to approach when it was broad daylight, I wouldn't have caught Rodney. You know, he should probably be dead by now. I don't know. But there's a key to this. You know, let's go back to our sermon, shall we? <laughs> so, so what a shame it is to have this condition, you know. Nyctalopia. It's, it's uh, night blindness. You can't see well when the light begins to dim. You know. So I want you to know that, again, the word says this. If your eyes are healthy, your whole body will be full of light. Hello? If your eyes are healthy, your, your whole body will be full of light. Amen? Now, aren't you glad that when it comes to you, God didn't say you're the chicken of the Lord? <laughs> no, you're not. When it comes to the Bible, God did not address you as chicken. All right? In the Bible, 34 times at least, He mentioned eagles. You know, I wish He would have mentioned patriots, but then again... <laughs> You know, mm, okay, somebody's still sore. <laughs> Isaiah 40, verse 31. Let's read this again, shall we? But those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not be faint. All right. In other translation, it says, those who trust in the Lord. They will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagle. Now, you got to understand that one of the property that is very commendable in eagles are not just the wings, but it's their eyes. 
It is says that the eagle's eyes are bigger than their brain. <laughs> Do your homework. Google it up. You know, so. <laughs> but this is with a purpose because, you know, just like somebody says, everyone is so in a hurry to go somewhere, but they, have, they don't bother to have a direction. I mean, all those speed, all those horsepower is nothing without a direction. Are you listening? So here's what's interesting about eagles, you know. Do you know that the eagles stares into the sun daily at least 45 minutes? Into the sun. You look at the slide, and oh, it's too bright. Eagles will stare in the sun 45 minutes at least a day into the sun. That's why they, 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 are, they, are, they are known to be flying soar with wings on eagles. Let me read you the amplified translation of this verse because it's so neat. You know, it, it says something about him taking up to the sun. If I can find my note here. There's so many verses coming out of my ear. All right. Um, he gives power to the faint and weary, and to him who has no might, he increases strength. A few verses before. Even the youth shall faint and be weary, and the young men shall feebly stumble and fall exhausted. But those who wait on the Lord, who expect, look for, and hope in him, shall change and renew their strength and power. They shall lift up their wings and mount up close to God as eagles mount up to the sun. As eagles mount up to the sun. Eagles look at the sun 45 minutes every day so that the tears, it will generate tears that will cleanse his eyes. And once the eyes are cleansed, it will make sure that you will have a vivid vision that will complement the strength of its wingspan because a strong wing is nothing without the ability to see clearly are you listening so this is very interesting and as i was looking at this you know i couldn't help but to lord thank you 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 call us to be eagles not chicken you know eagles can see well at night though they are they hunt mostly at daytime but they don't have problem flying at night you know eagles can see clearly eight times as far as human can and you know what eagles can see a rabbit from up to two miles and can focus fix and they can switch focus and what's so scary eagles are not just uh, 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 binocular but it's also binocular it means this one I can focus on this and this one can focus on that that's how scary it is <laughs> <laughs> you know, but here's the catch. Eagles look at the sun, stares at the sun 45 minutes a day so that the sun will generate tears that will cleanse his focus. I believe we too, as a believer, we must look at the sun. But our sun is not S-U-N, but S-O-N. We need to look at him because every time we draw near to him, he will clar clarify things in our life. He will sharpen our ability to see. He will sharpen our ability to look at things. How many of you would agree with me that oftentimes, it's not the challenge that gets you into trouble, but it is your perception of the challenge that gets you into trouble. Trouble is there regardless. But many times what deepens us into the problem is how we handle the problem with our perception, with our wrong perception. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Yeah. You know it's an open wire and you know it's problem. You can get electric shock, but you handle it negligently. Ah, oh, it's okay. You can't blame the wire. You blame, you have yourself to blame because of your wrong perception. You know, you gotta understand that. You know, <clears throat> um, I pray this morning as we begin this series. Guys, it's important for us to get the vision that God wants us to have. And you know what? It has been promised, it has been given, and we can, we can see what He wants us to see. We can hear what He wants us to hear. It would be such a shame if we were granted that privilege, but we are negligent or we're fearful uh, and we don't want to take advantage of it while it was provided for us. Don't walk in the dark. Don't drift in the sea. Have a direction. Have direction in your life. 
That's why this year one of the things that we believe must enlarge is our vision. You have got to see things the way God wants you to see it. Mountains are plenty everywhere. But do you understand there are mountains he wants you to climb? There are mountains he wants you to turn around? There are mountains he wants you to bore bore tunnel into it? There are mountains who are there so that you'll take a detour. But if you don't have the understanding, the right perspective of how to see this mountain, yeah, I know God will do it again, but you got to understand, not every mountain he will remove. Yes, he can do it again. He has no problem removing mountains. But not every problem, not every mountain he will remove. There are mountains he wants you to climb. There are mountains he wants you to turn around. Detour. Because detour is never a change of destiny, but it's a change of route to get into the destiny. Are you listening, church? You know, you, you, we got to look into the sun. We got to get our ability to see being clarified, being refreshed, being cleansed, so that we will be clear focused. You know, as, as we, I want to leave you with these two things that I think is critical. Practical aspect. As we talk about, it's important to have the, our ability to see being sharpened. There are two things that God dropped into my heart. You know, about our ability to see. Number one is taken from 2 Kings chapter 22, verse 3. This is what, uh, oh sorry, not not 2 Kings, but Proverbs, the first one. Proverbs 22, verse 3. This is what it says. A prudent man, if you can read it, read it with me. A prudent man foresees danger and takes precautions. The simpleton, yeah, take that in mind. Simpleton goes blindly and he and suffers the consequences. You know, all right? So the first thing that I pray will be enhanced, will grow. The practical aspect of our ability to see is the ability to foresee danger. All right. Here's the difference between having a sight and having insight. All right. Uh, I love uh, animals and wildlife, and uh, I remember being a small boy, a very uh, uh, crazy about grizzly bear. Anybody know what a grizzly bear is? Not the teddy bear. Grizzly bear is so big, you know, so big. And I love watching the National Geographic, you know, the magazine, you know, encyclopedia. I would stare at it, and you know what? When you see a grizzly bear, you say, wow, what a sight, all right? It's big. When you see it from a distance, that's a sight to see, all right? But if that bear is within 10 meters of you, you don't get a sight. You'd get situation. <laughs> Let me read you the definition of sight and insight, all right? So that, you know, let's school ourselves a little bit on this, all right? The word sight, it means something that is seen, very deep. <laughs> something that is seen. But the word insight, it means the power of our act of seeing into a situation. Hello? When the bear is within five meters of you, you don't just get a sight. There's a situation here. All right? And you know, insight is your ability to see into the sight, see into the situation, and make meaning out of it. And from there, you decide. You make a decision. Hello? All right? If you see a greasy bear, eight meters in front of you, eight, I don't know, eight meters, very tall, big, huge, burly, Five meters from you, you don't just go, oh, that's so oh, that's how amazing. Is this real? <laughs> you don't just you got a situation there. If you fail to see the relevance, the significance of it, that will be your demise. Maybe you couldn't even go past that's good, you know, and then start swinging the clock. <laughs> <Ooh>. <laughs> You don't just get a sight, you get a situation there. And you know, vision allows you to make meaning, to grow conclusion, to gain wisdom, to see the relevance of what is happening and where you are. Remember God says to Adam, look around you from where you are. So the ratio of that very sight and where you are standing right now, you know, my prayer is that one of the things that I see that I believe in need of serious adjustment is our ability to estimate danger. 
you know because we're living in a society in a generation who get lost into the trials of life because their values their parameters are so off so they could be standing five meters away from a grizzly bear and not make meanings out of it not make draw conclusion or relevance out of it we're living in a time where dangers are all around us if we cannot foresee it i don't want us to live in paranoia because i know that we're on the winning side but you have got to be prudent you know even the bible says no need to be captain america there's a reason why there's only one captain america <laughs> You know, but when you see danger, you know, don't be Captain America and try to fight every battle that comes your way. Fight the good fight. It means there are fights that are not good to fight. So the prudent person foresees the ability to see before it really, you know, become a problem with you. First, before it was a problem, it was usually a sight. Hello? My prayer is that you will gain wisdom so that out of every side you see, you will gain insight so that that way, from that point, you will know what to do, where to go, what is the next course of action. Don't just be idle and silent and be, uh, uh, what do you call the word, be uh, apathetic or just limber, idle, just there, uh, undecisive. What you see, you have got to pray for wisdom. That the sight that you are seeing becomes an insight for your life. Amen? And number two, it is this word from 2 Kings. You know, this was a time when Israel was ruled by you know, kings and they are in constant war against their neighbor. You know, there's this one enemy who constantly... You know, make a plan, but always fail because God would reveal the plan through his prophet Elijah. So the king become frustrated and said, okay, tell me who among you are against me? Who are the spy among us? You know, way to go, king. You know, anyone here is a spy? Can you please lift up your hands? <laughs> but then again, his advisor say, no, king. You know why you kept divided? You kept being divided? Because there was a prophet in Israel's camp. And it's very interesting. You read the whole passage. He would tell you what you are saying in your bedroom prophetic vision all right so they ambush dothan to capture elijah and when the servant saw all this army enemy he became fearful and he says to elijah my master my master we're doomed look we're so surrounded with this people and then you know i like what elijah says this is what he says don't be afraid the prophet answered those who are with us come on let's say this together those who are with us are more than those who are with them and then for 17 and elijah prayed i like this about him open his eyes lord so that he may see you know so he was referring referring to his first statement those who are with us are more than those who are around us then the lord opened the servant's eyes and he looked and saw the hills full the whole hill full of horses and chariots of fire all along elisha hello sometimes you know when you look at things with fear and insecurity it is also self-defeating all right so elijah prayed lord open my servant's eyes so that he will see the real situation hello because sometimes what you see is not the real situation amen that's why you you need to look at the sun you need to have spiritual eyes clarified healthy healed so that you get to see the real circumstances you are seeing challenge in your work. You are seeing challenge in your relationship. You are seeing challenge in your life, in your academic pursuit. And sometimes what you see with your physical eyes can deflate you, can uh, demoralize you, can defeat you morally, can make you lose your joy. But I pray this morning the same way Elijah pray. Don't be afraid. Because those who are around you, with you, are more than those who are with your enemies. And I pray the same prayer this morning like Elijah. Open, Lord, open the eyes of our heart that we may see 
the reality, the truth of that statement. Uh, you will never leave us nor forsake us. And, uh, you know, the Bible says that uh, the Spirit of the Lord, uh, greater is He that is in you than he that is in the world. You know, the Bible says that, you know, the angel camps and camps around believers. You got to understand, you know, you got to be able to have a, 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 the ability to see danger, but also you got to have the ability to see help, to see God's presence, to see God's companions, to see the real reality of His, you know, a presence within your life. You, you, you got to understand loneliness is a feeling, but that's not reality. Hello? Any single people here? <laughs> Loneliness is a feeling, but that's not the reality of who you are in God's presence. Because you're never alone. You're never alone. Hello? So celebrate singleness. Just not too long. But <laughs> just celebrate. Don't look at it as a curse. <laughs> Many people say, Lord, show me my, show me. The one, the best one, you know. Rather than praying, show me the one, why don't you work hard on being the best one? <laughs> because the Bible says, enlarge, prepare the container first, and then the blessing will come. Yeah. Don't say, Lord, send me a good man that will help me to change. Oh, forget it. <laughs> the one who will come is not the good one. <laughs> the one who comes is after discount. <laughs> oh, this one is easy. Okay, let me just... <laughs> What am I preaching about? <laughs> okay. The ability to see help. I know even at the darkest moment of my life, I am never cut off from my source of help. Are you listening? I don't know how desperate your situations are right now. I'm looking at you this morning. But you are never far away from the source of help. You are never overwhelmed by problem. Actually, you are overwhelmed by protectors. You know, yeah, the enemy looks so real because they're the one that you can see with your optical eyes. But the minute God opened Elisha's servants, he began to see the real reality, the new reality, that there are more that are with us than against us. And it was so much to the extent that the whole hills were surrounded by horses and chariots of fire. Now, if you can see that, I say it's difficult to be discouraged. When you can see that, you know, you can go against any army and say, okay, you want to go against me? Just know who you are going up against. Amen? Come on, church. Come on, I want to encourage you this morning. If you don't have vision of your life just yet, ask. Because he is a good father who knows how to give good gifts. Amen? It's a mouthful, but it's the truth. He is the good father who knows how to give good gifts. Amen? He's a good father who knows how to give good gifts. And the Bible says, you know, if any of you lacks wisdom, lacks perspective, lacks insights, ask. You should ask. In other words, it says you did not receive because you did not ask. And Jesus himself says, ask. And it shall be given to you. Seek and you shall find. And knock and the door will be open to you. You should ask God who gives generously. You know, another translation says liberally. To all without finding fault. And it will be given to you. You know, when God responds to your request for wisdom. He's not like the kind of guy who always keeps saying to you. I told you. <laughs> now you're coming to me, right? What did I say? What did I say? <laughs> Now you want me, huh? He didn't say that. <laughs> Believe me, your own insecurity and fear and condemnation will say that to you. And it will replay on your mind all the time. It was on heavy rotation. <laughs> but know that God is a good father. He, you know, when the son who has defy him, humiliate the whole estate, and sold the father's estate, came back, the father didn't even begin with listing, this is why you messed up. No. What he did was he threw his arm around him. Even when the son confessed to his own fault, Father, I'm no longer fit to be your son, just make me your slave. He didn't even listen to it, he turned to his servant and said, get the best rope. Make him look nice. Restore his state to become my son again. Yes, he deserved to be a slave, but he is my son. You know, ask. 
What have you got to lose not to ask? Ask Him. And He will give to you generously without finding fault and it will be given to you. Amen, church? This is our prayer that this year, one of the things that God will enlarge, if you would just agree and submit and allow Him to do, is the area of our vision. That we will be able to see. And we can begin simply by, you know, wait upon Him. Stare at the sun. That the sun will purify our vision, our focus, sharpen our focus, cleanses our, you know, the veil that is blinding us, you know. I like the statement by Andy Stanley. This is what he says. Everybody ends up somewhere in life. Everybody. A few people end up somewhere on purpose. Those are the ones with vision. Pause for a while and look where you are. Are you there by accident? Uh, the wind knocked me here, Pastor. Oh, it was the wave. Okay. But the good thing about us, even if you experience that, you can have course correction. You can. Because you can just simply go back to the roadmap as the compass, the one true knot that will never deviate. And you can be redirected. Everybody ends up somewhere. Even if you just be idle, you end up somewhere, believe me. Even if you don't do anything, you end up somewhere. A few people end up somewhere on purpose. But those are the ones with vision. I pray that where you end up, where you are, is not by natural cause or by element of chances, but there is something because of faithfulness and obedience to follow the vision that God has revealed within your life. Amen, church? Amen. I pray that you will have 2020 vision this year. Amen. Let's pray. Father, we thank you this morning for your word. Give us this clarity, O oh God. Help your church not only to gain sight, but to have insight. Help us this morning, O oh God. And we will see you, O oh God. Lead us into the breakthrough of our life. Father, I pray this morning for every single believer, my brothers and my sisters in this place, who are yet to have that clarity of vision in their life. I pray that you will touch them. I pray that you will speak upon their life. Help them, O oh God, not only to become a person with sight, but that their sight will generate them godly insight. Bless them. Come on, this morning, if you are praying, Pastor, I need, I need God to give me vision for my life. I, I am in need of clarity of direction. Don't be ashamed. We're all in the same spot. This morning, if you will humble yourself and say, Lord, I need your direction. If you would stare at the sun, if you would just humbly come to you, Lord, I need you. I need, I can't keep on making a new goal as I drift around and say, oh, oh yeah, maybe I, I, I want to go here. But all the while, you are there because of things that you did not plan. I pray this morning, this year, the people of the Lord will experience enlargement in the area of vision. That you will be able to get a new vision. This church believes that we are here to transform life. One of the things that we believe must be transformed is our ability to see the vision that God wants us to give. So if that is you, would you just lift up your hands or would just put your hands on your heart and say, Lord, I need you. Holy Spirit, reveal your vision. I am in this place where I realize that I lack wisdom. I lack perspective. I lack vision. And I want to humble myself and come to you and say, Lord, would you reveal to me your vision? And I come to you believing that your words are yes and amen. And when you say that the good father will give generously without holding back, liberally, and not count, finding faults, I believe in this, Lord. And this is why I come to you. Fill me, Lord. Reveal my eyes. Remove to me, O oh God, wrong parameters, wrong values that has caused me not to be able to see dangers. Remove to me, O oh God, the fear that has been paralyzing me for such a long time that has disabled me to be able to see your presence around me, that you, are never, you never left me nor forsake me, that those who are with me are more than those who are against me. Lord, help me, O oh God. Purify not just my heart, but cleanse my 
focus, cleanse my eyes, oh God. Help me to be able to see. Because I know that once your Holy Spirit is being poured out, and you haven't stopped revealing vision, healing the blindness of your people. I pray this morning that this church is not an exception, that every single person in this place is not an exception. I pray a vivid 2020 vision. Be born, be birthed. Even to those who have been here a long time, who have no 